Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Hi, right, Scotty, we're live, Friday Night Flies. Take it away, brother. Yeah, yeah, welcome back, Friday Night Flies. Got another simple one for you. The Clouser, one of your most universally used flies when stripping streamers, I guess. Doesn't matter, browns, or tarpon, or pike, or trout, or bass. Clouser yeah. is in everybody's box. <laughs> I think it's it's one of them staples. And, uh, far forward, you're leaning. Oh, yeah, yeah picking up that the, color. You're picking up the chroma keys that are in the background here we're playing but hey maybe we can just explain a little bit what's going on in the background because hey you got a new feature it's, it's friday night flies and we're pushing the boundary we are the original live show so we need to keep up in it because everybody keeps trying to copy our flavor yeah good luck so copying this one last year it was uh multiple cameras multiple zones or you know views for you guys so we can have some nice personal time here and then some nice up close detail for you and now uh, this year, we're going to be able to do a little bit of cross promotion for our brother company too, Pemberton Fish Finder. And uh, you know what? When we're going to be, uh, maybe we can do some live set stuff too. Maybe sample a little bit of what our water looks like in the background, some scenery shots. Yeah, it's kind of uh, endless the possibilities it, that we have with our beautiful green screen. Yeah. So uh, now I feel like the weatherman. It's awesome. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Today on the Birkenhead River, it is blown because I don't know if you can hear the rain. <laughs> In the background, yeah. but anyhow, if you guys want to see this full video, as you can see, it's pretty awesome. We're ripping around with uh, Zach from Bass Pro and yours truly, uh, Brad Knowles here. Uh, check it out on our uh, our, our brother YouTube channel, uh, Permanent Fish Finder or Brad Knowles. Perfect. Go check it out. It's a great video. Lots of fish. Great scenery. And it's just a taste of many of one of many videos that we got on there. Exactly. Check yeah. it out. Anyhow, so today. Scotty. A lot to get you thirsty. That's right. This is, uh, it's coho season. It's also chum yeah. season. Yeah. The rivers are plumb full of fish. And right now they're plumb full of water because of yeah. this crazy torrential weather. rainstorm that we're having. <laughs> but uh, this has been a really effective pattern. Uh, yeah. You've been putting a lot of big fish on, on, on this tight, pattern. tight rods, tight lines. A lot of tight rods. lines, a lot of big smiles on clients' faces. Um, you know, our other guide, Rick, we were having a little bit of a tough time in the beginning of the season. Then he grabbed the stock clouser out of his box and just started hammering stuff. And then we went to the bench and made I was it gonna, better. I was going to make it better. I was going to make it better. So <laughs> now it's crushing it. And uh, two basic colors, we're doing them in chartreuse do you have, and in yeah. pink. Do you so, have one tied in the pink? I do. Oh, you got to you got to show people what that thing looks like, Scotty, cuz like to be honest with you, I I'm a, I'm a big fan of chartreuse, but I'm a huge fan of the pink. So there's there's your pink. Oh man. Is that show up there? Yeah, no, up above was better cuz you're So you got pink. Yeah. yeah. Pink and the white and chartreuse and white. Chartreuse is more on those uh, dirty colored days. Uh, or when the pink stops working, then you, you throw in the chartreuse for a couple of spins and bam, bam, and then you got your next wave come through, go back to the pink, and yeah. you just keep bouncing between those two. And it makes a big difference. Money. Even if there's some fish kind of staging yeah. as they're coming through, you'll find that you'll pick up a few fish and then they'll avoid it like the plague. Yeah, because they've, so you they've, do seen, the they've seen their buddy get yanked That's out of the right. water. The old rope a dope switcheroo. Yeah, get, getting you right back like, into hey, it again. Wh what's that? Yeah. Kabango. Yeah. <laughs> and we've been uh, we've been dead drifting this thing uh, with the nice uh, lead eyes underneath the hook. It rides hook shank up, so it's a good one for bouncing uh, through the little bit of the shallower runs as fish are bouncing through. Getting them on the strip as well, getting them on the swing, and uh, there's a little Friday night flies twist. I know people are doing it. It's kind of funny to say Friday night flies twist, but we're using craft fur. So traditionally, your clousers are done with uh, bucktail. Yeah, another thing I'd like to add to that one is that the UV spectrum on these things, insane. It completely changes the game, and you can buy craft for for like next to nothing in comparison to bucktail. Bucktail is pretty pricey stuff. It is. And when it becomes a guide fly, if you can save ten cents on a fly, you're, you're going to save ten cents on a fly. It's more like saving a dollar on. Oh, easy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
Okay. Yeah, with the white, you don't even get to use the whole tail because no. half of it's brown. <laughs> what do you do with the brown? Like, ah, I can only do so many little <laughs> fry imitations. Okay, but so either way, we'll go down. We'll down go down here, and we'll get this and, going. Um, since we've changed the vice here, yeah, I'm we might have, have to adjust. Uh, yeah, bring her, bring her up a, or down a little bit. Down just a yeah. bit. Eh? Perfect. That's actually not too bad. And I there. think I got it pretty squared up. So yeah, that's pretty good. And the, the um, focus isn't too bad either. Here, we'll just check. Yeah, make I'll sure. just give you a second here. We'll get you all in focus so you guys can see all the detail. And so we got just three main components. You got your crafter in the two colors, and then uh, some of this lovely crinkle mirror flash. I'm really loving this stuff lately. It's kind of like. I'm addicted to it, like Zach's addicted to uh, Predator Wrap. So being that this stuff is really UV, I've had to turn the exposure down a little bit. She's bright. She's glowing. Yeah. So, I mean, right now you're actually able to see what he's using and what he's doing. I I'm going to keep a close eye on it, make sure that we get to see the colors are true now yeah. instead of glowing. Well, we'll, <laughs> see, we'll see what happens with the I, pink. I didn't turn the lights out, if that's what you were thinking. <laughs> yeah, we'll try it with the, the little pink guy in there. See if you still, because I know that uh, that chartreuse crafter, it is bright. It's really bright. Yeah. Yeah. And it's taken on that uh, LED light real good. I think not so bad? Yeah, it's not so bad. I mean, it's still, it's still pretty, pretty hot. But anyhow, it, it works. I'll, I'll, I'll just stay put here. We'll be able to see what's happening. And we'll make sure that you guys get your money's worth. All right. So starting off with these lovely this has become my my favorite shank for this fly or hook it's the gamagatsu b10s zach at bass pro got me into these last year during coho season really nice big gap which is which is pretty key to this thing well it's key to salmon too yeah because you don't want to be getting flesh you want to be getting structure you want to get structure yeah that's right and these guys, yeah, the, a little bit of that bigger gap really helps. So we got our uh, white thread going on here. And we're going to take it right back to the hook point. Which also happens to be the bend of the hook. And then we'll go back up here. Now I do want to do pretty nice tight wraps. I want to cover up that black shank. I'll hold this still a little bit. And then we're going to place the eyes on. And uh, I don't know if you saw last week Zach's little fly that he did, the uh, the dumpster. The chum dumpster. The chum dumpster. So he did this little little tip, which I really quite like, where he put a little thread dam on both sides of the hook eye. Hey, believe it. Kudos to Zach, and uh, I forget where he said he uh, got that idea from, but you know what? I like it. It works. So, in the nature of uh, giving kudos, there's my little my little thread dam. One there, one in the front, and that just helps to hold these eyes from sliding around on that hook shank. Just helps to get it bound in there. Now I'm gonna make sure I get this thing centered on my shaft. Okay, so you're putting those eyes on top like that. For what reasons, Scotty? So the positioning of the eyes is key, right? So, Especially if, when it comes to clousers. To clousers, yeah. When you put them on the wrong way, your hook point is gonna ride not the correct way. So we want this thing to be riding hook point up. So we put the weight on the bottom. If you're using a cone or a bead, your weight is centered. And with a clouser, it usually kind of ends up on its side. So this helps to ensure that this clouser rides hook point up, which allows you to get a little bit closer and deeper to that bottom, which is that strike zone. So I got some real And you'll good find that you'll get a lot less foul hooks as well. And that's key when the salmon are in there thick. thick yeah, because that becomes a, a real unavoidable problem. Yeah. Yeah, instead of that hook when it's swinging coming across sideways and hitting fish and sinking into meat, it's going to help keep it riding upright 
and allowing the body of that fly to bounce off of the fish as it goes through. As long as you're not over jealous and uh, setting the hook on everything you feel. Which as the more you do it, you'll you'll see, you'll get you'll get annoyed with foul hooking. And then you'll start to be a little bit more patient and wait for the pull <laughs> yeah. instead of the tap. Uh, Alright, so we got our white craft fur. That's going to be the first thing that's going on. That's going to be our base or the bottom of the fly. So I'm just going to uh, grab myself a little little tough of it here. Now the bottom I'm going to do, I'm going to dress a little lighter than I would do the top. So I don't know if you guys can really see. I'm going to try and hold it up. So I'm grabbing myself a nice little tough. And I've just peeled it, peeled it back and up off of the cape. I'm going to grab those points and somewhat try to, to line it up. Now I really wish I'd brought my little tool here that helps to get this under fur out. So what you want to do is hold it about a centimeter or half an inch from the base and pull out all these short little fibers. We don't need those in there. It just puts in bulk. So I'm just going to spread these out and with my fingers pull them out. There is a nice little DIY tool. I'm sure there's a professional tool that you can use, but I went to the pharmacy. I'm going to try my toothbrush here. I went to the pharmacy, went into the girls section, makeup section, and got myself this little tiny comb. It's a little metal comb and it's for their uh, separating their eyelashes. Works super good on this kind of stuff for pulling out the down out of um, out of buck, out of deer, out of craft fur, and you just Put the little fine teeth in there and pull it out which also works really good is a lice comb anything that's a rigid metal tooth that is really close together all right so we got that down out now what i'm going to do is i'm going to trim this butt section nice and flush and tight to my fingers creating a really good tie-in point i'll show you here once i get cleaned up boom nice clean tie-in point and we're going to fasten this. It looks like I need to tighten up my vise a little here. There we go. I'm going to fasten this in the front of the of the eyes. So one loose wrap just to kind of get everything. Slowly snug it down and with my fingers I'm ever so slightly just pulling the craft work back away from the eye. Now I'm going to really cinch this down. You can use the aid of um, thread wax if you like. That helps too. And I'm going to get that nice and secure. Take my, my thread, come up behind the eyes, and again, just kind of loosely do it. And then I'm going to pull back towards the eye of the hook, snugging that craft fern in as close to the base of those eyes as I can. Good couple wraps to secure all that. Now, without letting go, I'm going to do nice open turns going down this hook shank to the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, nice, good, secure turns. And then those nice, even open turns going forward again. And then I'm going to get my thread to the front. Now, I'm just going to go back with my fingers on this, so you can see we got all this gnarly tail here, and I'm going about double the, the length of that hook shaft, and I'm going to trim it out on an angle. That's little strike keepers in my way. Bingo. So just trim it out on an angle, nice and rough, that's all she's got. Now we're going to flip this over. I'm just going to make sure that tail is centered at the back. It hasn't spun on us. Now let's put in a little bit of flash here. So I got my crinkle flash. I'm going to grab uh, two pieces of it off the cape. Let's see here. Oh, I got flash everywhere. All right, so I got my two pieces. I'm going to tie one on one side, tighten it in on the middle. A 
one on one side so that these two are coming on my side of the hook shaft and then fold these two over and put them on the other side of the hook. Easy peasy. Now I'm just going to clean up this nose a little bit. Uh, it's a nice tie-in point for the, uh, the next layer. And then I just trim off those flash so that they're about the length of the tail, somewhere thereabouts. Now we go to the pink. And I'm going to grab just slightly more pink than I did the white. And I'll just go to my cape here, pump up a little section. And now when I'm trimming it off of, off of the cape, I'm doing it as close to the bottom or close to the material as I can so I get the most amount of length off of this thing. And again, we want to take out all this down or the smaller fibers that are in the inside. So just run your fingers around, pull it out. It's not necessary. If you leave it in there, what's going to happen when you bind down is all the longer fibers are going to end up pulling out It really bulks your fly out too. You'll notice like the head. Yeah. If you're building head with uh, craft fur, leave it in there. Yeah, like if, if you're doing if you're doing some of those uh, tied in going Fold forward, over. like yeah. your salt water flies mm -hmm. and stuff, yeah, you want to leave it in for the bulk. This application, we don't really need it. So we got all that out. And again, I'm pinching it all together. And trim it clean so I got a nice clean tying area. Dr. Slick, I think I need new scissors too. That's craft fur. <laughs> yeah, it burns through them. Alright, so we got that nice tie in spot, and if you can see in my fingers, I make it nice and round. That really helps versus being at all packed up really tight in a long rectangle. So in my fingers, I kind of I'm twisting it and turning it a little bit when I'm gathering my my feathers. And we're gonna get it nice and tight. You can see my starting point, my my threads back to the eyes. So one nice loose one in there. You can see it, it starts to cinch. I'm just gonna make sure that I have it back enough that this isn't gonna get interfered with the eyes, the eye of the hook. And then I'm gonna start tightening her down. Wrapping that thread forward. Do not let go of the wing. Scotty, you make that look easy, my friend. And then we're just going to build that head in. So once I got it nice and secure, I can let go of that wing. I'm going to clean up this nice head. At this point, you could uh, tie off the white and interchange and put a little hot spot in there, change to a a UV orange thread or a UV pink thread, red, whatever you like. You can go black. Oh, we're not done quite yet. Okay. We'll spin her. We'll spin her. So we got that nice, neat head put in there. A couple whip finishes. I like to definitely finish these off with a little Superfly head cement. So we got all this stuff on now. I am going to tri trim this wing, so I'm just going to take it out of the vise for a second. Try how I trim the wing, because obviously the vise gets in the way. So first key, prop your wing up, and get that hook splitting it properly, right in the middle. So I'm just looking at it, make sure I got evil, equal parts on both sides. And then what I'm going to do, is I'm going to flatten it out, or Flare it, and I come back in with my scissors, and I'm going to cut again on an angle. But I'm just going to make it a little bit longer than that white on the tail, on the tail end. I'll see if we can get this going here, and just loosely kind of trim it back. Let me see what happens here. So it'll all start coming together, and then if you flatten it going across you can see one side a little longer than the other so I'll just go in there with the scissors just trim off some of those longer ones on the outside now that's getting a little picky that's when your OCD is kicking in 
Yep, that's what that is. <laughs> but when this thing's flowing around, this helps make that thing just purr in the water. Hey, put it back in a vice. We need to get a thumbnail from that bad boy. Make it look pretty, Scotty. Make it look pretty. There it is. There it is. So you see, you got just a little bit of flash. I do them with flash, without flash. You know, some days you need that little that little glint, and other days, if it's really overcast, sometimes knocking the flash out of it really helps because uh, it's kind of unrealistic to have a lot of things. Are we upstairs or still down? Oh, we're still down. Um, yeah, when it's overcast, overly flashy flies, I usually find tend to work a little less because there's there's no light bouncing around, so okay. knock, knock the flash out. We're going up. There we start are. Start winning. Okay, pull your head back a little bit. Your, uh, Get the green out. Well, you're not in focus. <laughs> there we go. How about now? Uh, still, you're completely out of focus. That's all right. You guys, <laughs> you've only been seeing me for about five years. And sure. Do the old don't, don't need factory to... reset here. Come on. There it is. Hey. That's sometimes. What... Sometimes we gotta get old school, yeah, to make the new school look. It's good. It's like when it doesn't work, you kick it. <laughs> yeah, kick it twice. Just put your hand in front of the camera. Yeah. So that's a nice easy clouser for you. Um, try to tie it up in a bunch of different sizes, a bunch of different colors. Pretty much can go for any species that you were fishing. Just change the, the size of it. And that's my fly today. It's Friday night flies. Hope you like the video that's going on in the background. Check it out on uh, Peppermint Fish Finder's YouTube channel. If you're tuning in on us on Facebook or our website, also know we have our own YouTube channel as well. And I know um, Zach and the boys have been posting videos on there that don't necessarily always make it to the Facebook or the webpage. So, you know, it's, it's becoming quite the network these days. So stay tuned and uh, we'll be back with some more flies for you know what Happy we should throw it out there too if you want to be involved with friday night flies and you're an artist <laughs> we always welcome artists yeah this so, is a sharing community you don't right. always have to see me every week that's right get in touch with us pros at fridaynightflies.com drop yep. us an email we want to hear from you and mm -hmm.